As we well know, not every video game has the smoothest start to life, with many titles launching to a less than stellar critical and or player response. Whether it's gameplay issues, bugs, or just a general lack of content, a bungled launch can haunt a game for the rest of its days. Sadly, many developers don't do anything to try and improve these situations should they arise, and even those that make an attempt still somehow manage to miss the mark. Every so often, however, a game that isn't very good at launch will get a number of updates and patches that elevate it from mediocrity into something that's worth your time. It's those very games to which we'd like to draw your attention, ask that you forgive their past transgressions, and implore you to give them another shot. They've changed, we promise. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 games that deserve a second chance. Number 10. Diablo 3 Purely speculating, but I can only assume that whoever was marketing the concept of always online DRM was doing an absolutely smashing job at the beginning of the 2010s because it was flipping everywhere. Presumably, if you agreed to use it in your game, you got a free t-shirt that read, I have a fundamental misunderstanding of what gamers actually want. Wild conjecture aside, the decision to make Diablo 3 always online, i.e. not allowing players to engage in even the single player experience if they didn't have an internet connection, is one that Blizzard has stood by ever since the game's launch. Sadly, when their servers had a meltdown during Diablo 3's launch in 2012, it was game over, or more aptly, game never started in the first place for everyone that pre-ordered it. Marred by a disastrous release, many players refused to even consider playing Diablo 3, which is a huge shame because behind all of the controversy and the Era 37s was a fantastic hack and slash RPG that both critics and players really enjoyed and continue to do so to this day. The story is interesting, the artwork is stunning, and there's more armor and weapons available than anyone could use in a billion lifetimes. So although Diablo 3 is still a bad boy that won't do what society tells it to, we reckon you should look past the cigarette and leather jacket because he's a lovely young man at heart and he just needs someone to understand him. Number 9. Kirby Star Allies Oh Kirby, you big old ball of indeterminate pink squishy stuff, I know you've done wrong, but don't think I could stay mad at you even if you inhaled my entire family and impersonated my dad. Released in March 2018, Kirby Star Allies is the Little Blushing Sphere's most recent adventure in platforming, and sees the eponymous Globule not only feasting on the powers of his foes, but also flinging tiny hearts at folk to effectively brainwash them into becoming his allies. Although perfectly playable and ostensibly fun for all the family, the game wasn't massively well received at launch, with critics praising the colourful design but lamenting its lack of difficulty and its reticence to try anything new. Luckily for players, Nintendo were listening to their feedback, and throughout the remainder of 2018 they released a whole load of free updates for the game, bringing in fan-favourite characters from Kirby titles of the past and adding in new game modes that brought more interesting level design and a greater degree of challenge to the title. All of this has caused a huge shift in how both critics and players feel about the game, and most importantly, has transformed this forgettable title into a must-play for anyone that's fond of cute shapes and bright colours. Number 8. Warframe If you've ever had one of those days where nothing seems to be going right, then you'll probably have some idea of how it felt to be Warframe back when it launched in 2013. Don't get us wrong, there have been games that have had a far worse time of it, but it did seem like everything was against Warframe from the get-go, with journalists comparing it unfavourably to the hotly anticipated Destiny, shunning it for its free-to-play mechanic and lambasting it for all its grinding. In short, it was Warframe versus the world, and the world was winning. Fast forward eight years and the game is, despite everything critics threw at it, still going strong. But how could it have possibly recovered? I hear you cry. The answer is simple. Updates. You get an update. You get an update. Even you. you with the hat. You get an update too. All of you. The game has been patched to within an inch of its life, had its combat system completely overhauled, and dropped more expansions and seasonal events than you can shake a stick at. At its core, Warframe is still a free-to-play MMORPG with a great deal of grinding, but it's never claimed to be anything but. It turns out, however, that this model does appeal to an awful lot of players, so if you like the idea of being a sci-fi space ninja and not paying a penny for the privilege, then we highly recommend you give it a go. Number 7. For Honor not for the first time in its history, looking at you, Rainbow Six Siege, Ubisoft saw a great concept bungled into existence with the release of 2017's For Honor, their melee fighting title set in ye olde times. Despite being released on Valentine's Day, however, players were far from in love with the game, or at least certain aspects of it. Whilst the single-player experience was deemed acceptable by most players, with some even going as far as to praise it for its combat mechanics and steep difficulty curve, the multiplayer experience was less than satisfactory. First off, it was hard to find a map 
match in the first place, with the game often leaving players stuck in lobbies for ridiculous periods of time. And secondly, once you manage to find a game, the network connection would drop out on a regular basis. As if all that weren't annoying enough, the game came with everyone's favourite mechanic, microtransactions. And before you ask, no, not just for cosmetic items. Fortunately, a plethora of updates applied to the game over the years has meant that the multiplayer woes are a thing of the past, not to mention all of the new heroes that have been added to the roster and next-gen capabilities. So if a close combat challenge is what gets you up in the morning, then you could do worse than to have a stab, do you get it, at For Honor. There are still microtransactions though. Sorry. Number 6. Halo The Master Chief Collection OK now, gather round boys and girls for Uncle Ben, is it not that one, is about to tell you he's dead, is about to tell- I'm not, is about to tell you the tale of one of the worst major game releases of all time, at least according to one particularly angry critic. When Microsoft announced the Master Chief Collection at E3 2014, it's not an understatement to say that the community went absolutely bonkers for it. The original trilogy, plus Halo 4, remastered and coming to your console for the cost of a single game? Why Microsoft, you spoil us. Sadly, when it came to the actual launch, the multiplayer aspects of the game were basically unplayable, and despite the praise it garnered for the graphical and frame rate upgrades, this was all overshadowed by the fact that players were almost completely unable to party up with their pals for the long-awaited shooty fun times. It took a while, with development being abandoned entirely for a period of time, but the issues with the multiplayer have been fixed, restoring the Master Chief Collection to the pinnacle of gaming it should have been at launch. Following the changes, players were so thrilled with the game that when its Windows announcement was unveiled, they bombarded developer 343 Industries with pizzas, to the point where they had to beg people to stop. Now who doesn't love a good cheesy ending? Number 5. Sea of Thieves Here's one for you. Why are pirates called pirates? Well, the word pirate is derived from the Greek perate, which literally means attacker. Oh right, sorry, I mean because they are... are. <clears throat> Horror jokes for which our writer should be forced to walk the plank aside, Rare's 2018 swashbuckling action-adventure title Sea of Thieves has, in recent years, become quite a triumph for multiplayer gaming. Unfortunately, it wasn't always that way, and upon release many critics and players accused the game of the worst crime that it could have possibly committed. It was a bit boring. Admittedly, there was some fun to be had parting up with your friends and captaining a vessel whilst accompanied by many a tankard of grog and a good sea shanty, but bopping about between islands, fighting identical enemies and collecting very similar booty soon wore rather thin. By this point in the list, I probably don't need to tell you that the developer has since released an abundance of updates, expanding the game far beyond what it started out as. Such updates have included the introduction of Tall Tales, which is the game's unique take on a story-driven campaign, alliances that let two or more crews buddy up for a more friendly experience, new enemies, pets, and much, much more. Now, where's my eye patch? I've got booty to plunder. Number 4. Middle Earth Shadow of War Let's play a fun game. It's called Do a Quick Google Search and Take a Shot Every Time You Come Across a Game Whose Reputation Has Been Ruined By The Inclusion Of Microtransactions. I appreciate my game could have a catchier title, but I still guarantee you won't make it past page one without needing medical attention. There's a vast pool of candidates from which we could have picked when it comes to launches marred by loot box scandals, and whilst Star Wars Battlefront 2 is an obvious choice in terms of games that weren't previously but are now worth your time of day, it is starting to feel a bit like low-hanging fruit. Middle Earth Shadow of War, on the other hand, had its launch equally tainted by its inclusion of loot boxes that offered gameplay advantages to players willing to shell out real-world cash. Following backlash from the gaming community, this was eventually dropped, but sadly, the shadow hanging over the title is not that of war, but rather of a greedy publisher aiming to monetize players' every move. These days, however, Shadow of War is a genuinely great entry into the Middle Earth universe, with an engaging plot, thrilling battles, and an interesting combat system, and is well worth your time now it isn't trying to nickel your hard-earned cash. Number 3. Final Fantasy XIV It takes a great deal of courage to admit a mistake, and in the world of video games it's damn near unheard of for a developer to stand up and tell their audience that they've failed, but that's exactly what happened with Final Fantasy XIV. Ambitions were lofty for FF14. The development team aimed to create an online experience that captured the essence of Final Fantasy, allowed players to adventure across the fantasy realm of Eorzea, and embroil themselves in the Galean invasion and primal threat. Originally released back in 2010, the MMORPG was panned by basically everyone that came across it following its launch, with players criticising the use of strange gameplay features that weren't at all in keeping with the franchise, as well as general performance and gameplay issues. The team tried their best to fix it, but ultimately 
unfortunately, the flaws in the game's engine and server structure could not be overcome, and the decision was taken to scrap the original version and completely rebuild it from the ground up. And you know what? It only bloody well worked, didn't it? After the entire game was overhauled and re-released, players had nothing but praise for the new title, finally pleased to be able to enjoy a dash of MMORPG atop their Final Fantasy Sunday. Number 2. No Man's Sky If we were of the inclination to present an award for the game with the largest hype-to-release disappointment ratio, it would almost certainly be given to No Man's Sky. Maybe Cyberpunk, but mostly No Man's Sky. Prior to its 2016 release, players were led to believe that the game would be the best thing since sliced bread, with the devs promising a smorgasbord of stunning, procedurally generated planets for players to explore. Unfortunately, upon release we ended up with little more than a slightly stale spam sandwich. The main criticism was that half of the stuff that had been promised, including multiplayer capabilities, were missing from the game. Add to this the fact that the procedurally generated environments were only as unique as the number of assets the game held – spoiler, it wasn't all that many – plus the radio silence from the developer in regards to the assortment of problems, and it's not difficult to see why the backlash was so great. Since its launch, however, the team behind No Man's Sky have worked tirelessly to update the game and at the time of writing continue to do so on a regular basis, meaning that the game is now far closer to what fans were promised prior to launch. There are far more assets so the planets feel more unique, they've implemented multiplayer and even added character customization. Had No Man's Sky been released in its current state, it would have been hard to level any criticism at it, and it's for this reason that it's worth a few hours of your time today. Number 1. The Elder Scrolls Online Here's the issue with creating something that people love. Whatever comes after is probably never going to live up to the original thing. I don't think it's an understatement to say that a lot of people really like Skyrim, and though we may all fight between ourselves when it comes to our favoured platform, at least we can all agree on the fact that Skyrim is great. It's for this reason, then, that The Elder Scrolls Online was such a flop when it released back in 2014. Yes, it looked nice, and had clearly made some attempts to capture the spirit of its forerunners. As games go, it was fine. Sadly though, fine doth butter no parsnips, especially when your older sibling is so popular that they've been released for every electronic device known to man. Hell, you can probably install it on your Roomba if you know where to look. The Elder Scrolls Online was okay, but it was let down by its moderate scope and limited ideas. Not ones to shy away from a challenge, however, Zenimax continued to work on and expand the game over the coming years, adding various expansions that massively broaden the world, add new quest lines, and allow players to group up with friends unhindered. On the whole, The Elder Scrolls Online may well still stand in the shadow of its predecessors, but even in the shade, the weather's nice, it's brought you an ice cream, and at the very least, you won't get heatstroke.